Hello, my name is Scott Clement and I'm with Profound Logic. I'd like to show you our visual design environment for building brand new graphical HTML5 compliant uh, applications for RPG programs. What I've done here is I've opened up my web browser and the interesting thing here is that Profound UI, which is where this visual design environment comes from, all runs in the web browser so there's nothing to install on your PC that's pretty nice because when you install it you install it only on your IBM I and it all runs on the IBM I and then you just access it through a web browser and that's really really nice when you do upgrades because you've only got one place to upgrade it you just upgrade it on the server and and poof it's it's available everywhere um, I've taken the liberty of navigating to our designer already um, so it's so it's open now on my screen but to get here, you just go to your system, whatever that is. This Power 8 here is the name of my system. Um, but you would replace that with the IP address or domain name of your IBM I. And then it's followed by a colon, followed by 8080, which in this case is the port number that it's installed on. When you install Profound UI, you select what number that is. The default is 8080. And then it's followed by slash Profound UI slash designer. That tells it to open up our visual designer. So here we are in the Visual Designer, and I'm, I happen to be using the Firefox web browser. The, you, you can use any modern web browser. Um, you can use the Microsoft ones like Internet Explorer or Edge. You can use uh, Google's Chrome. You can use Firefox, of course, as I'm doing. Uh, you can use Opera. You can use Apple Safari. Uh, so it works anywhere. So here I am in the Visual Designer, and the Visual Designer is kind of divided into different sections here. We've got a whole bunch of tools at the top. We call that the ribbon. Um, so there's lots of tools and this is divided into tabs with more things you can do. I'm not going to go into every single tool. I just want to give you an idea. You know, we've got all these different things here because we can do not only sort of simple things, which is what I'm going to show you today, some, something we can get to sort of very quickly and you'll see how simple it is to build a graphical application, but we also can do sophisticated things for, you know, down the road when you get uh, familiar with all of this you'll want to be able to do more advanced things. So we've got tools of all kinds here in the Visual Designer. So the ribbon is one set of tools. On the left here we have what's called the widgets. Um, so there's lot, lots of different tools there. And on the right we've got record formats and below that we've got properties. So lots of different tools for doing different things. The section in the middle that kind of looks like a blank sheet of graph paper is what we call the canvas. So that's where we're going to build our screens. So the idea here is that a widget represents something on the screen. Um, so things like labels are just plain sort of text, like literals or constants that you would put on your screen. Uh, output fields are, you know, for putting output from a variable. Text boxes are input fields. So that pretty much already covers everything you could have done in green screen. Uh, but there's about 125 different widgets to do all sorts of things. So in addition to uh, the sort of basic input and output fields, there's things like buttons and check boxes, drop down boxes, graphs and charts, um, all sorts of different widgets for different things, um, displaying pictures, just lots of different things. Um, and what you do is you drag them onto your screen to build an application. So for example, to build like a Hello World application, I'm going to start with what's called a panel. Um, you'll notice I've scrolled the, the widgets down and by the way these widgets are divided into sets so widget sets you'll notice is the tab I have selected there's also all widgets which shows all to all the widgets that we have but widget sets are widgets that have been styled to work together and you can create your own widget sets um, what customers like to do is they'll you know think about their company color scheme and how they want their applications to be kind of standardized and you know they'll sit down and create their own sets that are styled the way that they want them to to uh, be but we come we ship the product with two sets as of as of the time that I'm making this video one called blueprint which is kind of a blue theme which I really like and one called office copy which is similar but it's more like a gray and black type theme all right so I'm going to put a panel on the screen and I do that just by taking the panel and dragging it onto the screen where I want it to go. So what a panel is, is it kind of looks like a window, kind of gives it like a, a window type of appearance. Uh, so you'll see I dragged that on there. I want mine to be a little bit bigger, so that's no problem. I'll just take it with the mouse and drag it out and make it the size that I want. Um, you'll notice that by default it has a title of panel title. I'll want to change that, so I just double click on it. 
and when I double click on it that gives me the ability to type you know whatever I want. You'll also notice there's other things up here like I can make a bold or italic. Um, I can change the font size and, and various other things. So I'm going to say something like I don't know we'll call it example application. Um, and now I've got this kind of nice window um, gives it kind of a nice sort of graphical look. I want to put some the words hello world as a simple example on my on my screen. This is not coming from a variable or anything. It's going to be a literal piece of text that's always there or a constant. Um, so you do that with a label widget. So I'm going to drag label on here and put it in in wherever I want it to go. And then I can go ahead and double click and type into that. So I can say, you know, Scott's application if I want to. Um, or I guess I, I just told you I was going to put hello world. So I'll put hello world in there hello world and then I've got that in there and you'll notice again just like on the title we had this toolbar pop up where you can change things so for example if I wanted to I could make it larger so that it said hello world in a bigger text or something like that so you can do all those sorts of things um, the other thing I'm going to do in this very sort of simple example is I want to put like an exit button on here um, I'm actually going to start with a cancel button I thought the cancel button kind of looked good for exit um, it says cancel though I want it to say exit so I can again just double click on it um, like everything else and I can just change the word to say exit instead of cancel so now I've got kind of a very a very pretty looking screen you know very simple of course but you can see how simple this is to make very you know very attractive looking screens you can just drag and drop and make them very quickly now everything I did here you know when I changed the text when I changed the the size of the font when I uh, change the word to be exit. Um, when, even when I dragged things in with the mouse, everything I did, what that actually did under the covers is set properties. So properties kind of control how everything works. And you can see the, all of the properties over here, and there's a lot of properties, and I can actually manually set any of these properties if I want to. Uh, there's properties that apply to the whole screen, which is if I have not selected any of these widgets with a mouse, uh, that's what comes up is the screen level properties but when I click on something say the words hello world here you'll notice how that's highlighted with the mouse here now I'm showing the properties for that when I changed the text to say hello world what that really did was change this value property in fact I could have changed it right here in the properties box and it would have done exactly the same thing likewise when I changed the font size it changed the font size property when I move it around with the mouse drag it with the mouse it changed the left and top properties that's how you know it knows where to put it so everything that we do actually adjusts properties um, likewise if I were on the screen properties you know my screen is a record format and my RPG program will want to do something like execute format followed by the record format to display it well I can change the format name just by double clicking in the record formats area and I can change it and give it a name I'll call it hello hello in this example but you'll notice that that actually changed a property so basically everything you do is setting a property and if you want to you can go in and set all of these um, by hand which is nice when you go down the road and you want to do more advanced things because there's a lot more properties uh, than you might imagine you know like everything about how this works can be controlled from these properties Another powerful thing about properties is that they can also be set not just here in the Visual Designer, but in your RPG program. So for example, maybe I wanted the, the text to be a different color depending on something. Maybe let's you know imagine for a moment that this were a number. And maybe if it were a negative number, I'd want to make it red um, versus being black when it's a positive number, something like that. I could do that by going to the color property and clicking this little icon next to it. This little blue and white icon is called the binding button. And you'll see that if I leave the mouse hovering over it for a second, it says that you use this to bind color because I'm, I'm on the color property um, to a program field, so a field for my RPG program. So I could connect that or bind it, as we call it, uh, to an RPG variable that would set the color. I'm not going to do that in this case, though. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something with this button. So uh, a button, when you click it, you're probably going to want your RPG program to react, right? You're going to want your RPG program to do something in response to that button. Um, so there's a property for that. It's called response. So the response to clicking a button. 
and I can bind that and I can bind it for example to an RPG indicator so if you click the button indicator 3 would be turned on in your program if you don't click it then indicator 3 would be off in your program or even better yet instead of using a numeric indicator like you know traditional RPG might have used I can use a named indicator so BTN exit button exit um, and then my RPG program could refer to you know the actual words button exit instead of a numeric indicator it just makes the code easier to read um, so that's that's what that's all about any of these properties can be connected to RPG variables and can be controlled through RPG variables all right so I've created a simple application or a simple screen rather um, so now what I want to do is I want to make it work I want to be able to control this from my RPG program well, the first thing I'm going to need to do is save my changes so I'm going to use the save as button up here to save it and believe it or not this actually saves to a DDS source file so standard DDS just like you might use for a green screen um, so I've got I've got it going to QDDS source I've got it going into my test library SK is my initials um, so SK test is my test library and then I'm going to use a member named hello D for hello display file you can also type a text description just like you can on any of the commands on IBMI um, so we'll call this uh, hello world or something like that and then I'll go ahead and click save and it actually saved that uh, to a to a DDS source member and then I can use the compile button here to compile my display file and this actually creates a disk object on IBMI um, so this is a display file object on disk it's called hello D um, and it's going again to my test library so that just defaulted to the same name as the source member when I click compile though it will compile it so just to show you uh, what I mean by this is creating an actual object on IBMI let's take a look um, I switched over to my uh, you know my 5250 screen and you'll notice that if I do a work with objects here that same object name is an actual display file it created an actual regular display file just like a green screen would um, in fact when I saved it I saved it to a DDS source member so I could take a look at that real quick and you can see what that looks like this is perfectly valid DDS by the way you can see R for record format just like you might see in standard uh, DDS and if I go to the bottom you'll see the field is being defined here that exit button that I declared but an interesting thing is the button is declared as a hidden field and there's nothing else on the screen except all of this stuff here on the right um, which is which is an IBM provided DDS keyword called HTML which we're using to save all of the different properties that I set so everything that that I can set in the visual designer can be saved here in this HTML keyword um, there's nothing else on the screen though besides that hidden field in this this keyword so if you were to run this on a green screen it would actually come up as a completely blank screen there'd be nothing to see but the powerful thing is because we're saving all of this data into a display file I can reference it from an F spec in the RPG program and it also works perfectly with your change management software because it is just a regular DDS source member it's just like you would have used in a green screen and in fact I could have compiled it with the IBM create display file command just like you you would uh, with a green screen or, or from PDM or something like that um, so I don't need to use the visual designer to compile it I could have compiled it from the with the regular command in fact that's all the visual designer does under the covers is run that command anyway I've got my uh, screen now and I'll need an RPG program to drive it um, so the RPG program is actually very very simple it's a regular RPG program there's nothing special about it we're still using IBM's tools and I'm, I'm here in RDI IBM's tool for editing uh, RPG code so I'm not using any special tool there um, and it's just regular RPG code that I'm going to compile with IBM's RPG compiler the only thing we have to do differently in profound UI besides uh, what you would have done in a green screen is declare this handler keyword so like that so what the handler keyword does is it allows profound UI to handle your screen instead of the green screen environment so think about that for a second when, when you've made green screen in applications in the past um, what really happens under the covers when you do something like execute format which is what I'm doing here or whether you're doing something like read or write you know working with a sub file with read C whatever it is uh, what really happens under the covers is that those opcodes 
run a routine in the operating system. That routine might go into your green screen display. It might get all the details out of, out of the DDS and use it to generate 5250 code that gets sent to your, to your uh, workstation or whatever, your terminal emulator. So that's all, all this does is control what routines get called under the cover. That's all that handler keyword does. Instead of calling IBM's green screen routines, I'm overriding it to call profounds routines. And that way we can make a graphical application that does not, um, does not use any green screen at all under the covers. It's purely going directly to the web browser. But we can still use traditional RPG techniques or so regular F spec and a regular execute format or whatever. And you can see that this is using the old style fixed format F spec. Um, it's using free format calcs, though it also works with fixed format calcs as well. And in fact, it can be used in a pure, a purely free format program as well. So um, it doesn't matter. Any, any sort of level of RPG, as long as it's RPG4, um, will work perfectly with this. You don't, you know, you can do fixed format or free format or whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. So I've created this little RPG program, and as you can see, it doesn't really do very much. It just um, declares the file. That's that hello D uh, workstation file that I already created. And then it does execute format hello, and that record format hello is what I called the record format when we were in the Visual Designer. I also created a little CL program. This doesn't do very much. Um, it just adds my test library to the library list and then calls the regular RPG program. So very, very simple uh, CL program. But you can see that none of this is magic. Right? We're still using the same IBM technologies that we've always used on IBM I, so a CL program that calls an RPG program, RPG program that displays a display file. The magic, if, if there is any, is here in the Visual Designer being able to make this pretty application um, that's a graphical screen that we use from RPG. All right, so I've taken the liberty of going ahead and, and, and compiling that RPG program and everything um, in advance, so that's already done. Um, the one thing we need to do now is just run our program. And the way that works is if I go in the launch menu here, I've got an option called maintain initial programs. And here I've got a listing of all the different users who use the system. And I can go in and I can set which program runs for that user. So I've got mine. My, my name is S. Clement, Scott Clement. Um, and so I've got it running Hello CL. That's that CL program that we saw um, in RDI and in my test library. Now, of course, you can use plus to add more different users in here um, and so on. Um, you know, if you weren't already there, you'd hit plus, you'd type those three fields, and then you click save, and it would save those changes. And then, when you finally go and you launch your session, it'll give you a little sign on screen, um, which is also all customizable, by the way, if you wanted to change how that looks. But I'll go ahead and type my username and password, and you'll see it has run my graphical Hello World program that I just created. So that's how simple it is to create a graphical application using Profound UI's environment. And as you can see, you know, it only takes a couple minutes and you end up with a very beautiful application. Thank you.